YouTube, what is up? What is up? What is up? Um, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of the Malcolm Cook Show. It is me, Malcolm Cook. Um, episode number five. What are we going to talk about today? Um, all right, y'all going to work with me on the title because it might not say this exact title under this, um, but I want to talk about, I love you mom and dad, but fuck that, this is my life, <laughs> I want that to be the title of the episode, I love you mom and dad, but fuck that, this is my life, that's a lot, so I'm going to figure out how to tagline it, but if you clicked on this, you're in for a treat, man, Um. so before I start this, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm read a, a Steve Jobs quote, or actually it's not even a Steve Jobs quote. Uh, well no it is. Um, but I'm gonna share a definition with you guys first. Let me see Steve Jobs dogma. Okay. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. Steve Jobs, 2011. <clears throat> um, I remember hearing that shit in 2011. Um, and that shit, uh, it, it fucked me up. It fucked me up because, uh, that was along the same time that I dropped out of college. And, um, when you dropping out of college, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has an opinion on your decision making skills. You know what I'm saying? Um, my mom had an opinion she supported me, but she was a, she was definitively let down. Um, she understood, but I knew she was a little let down. My dad, you know, in my dad's eyes, I was doing some shit that, not even in his eyes, I was, you know, doing some shit. I was the first like person that he knew besides my mom to like leave and go off to college the traditional way. And my mom didn't necessarily do it the traditional way, but like I was his first experience. And anybody in his inner circle of, you know, going to the dorm and picking out the linen for the thing, you know, and my dad was proud of that. And um <clears throat> I uh I got in college I had uh I got put out I got put on suspension um for the first semester of the second year of college. So I was just living out there. I got my own apartment and just lived out there. And then the second semester, I joined the EMT program um, at my mom's suggestion because she is a nurse. She's an RN. You know what I'm saying? So my mom's like, oh, uh, you should check that out. I looked at it. I tried it. And I ain't going to hold you. I fucking had a blast. But I was like, you know what? This isn't what I want to do with my life. I dropped out of college. Boom. All right, that's not what we're talking about. When I dropped out of college, I told my dad, "Hey, man, you know, I'm not about to, I'm not about to finish this EMT. Uh, I'm not about to further this EMT training because I got certified as a basic. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going back to do the rest of that shit. Ooh. Man, my father, man, my father, fucking, my father's a southeast nigga, man. He hit me with the the fuck you mean you ain't going back to school, man? You dumb mother, man. You tripping, man. Woo, woo. My father, I'm talking about this man was hot. He was hot, you know? Um, I said, yeah, man, I'm not about to go to school because um, um, I don't know what I'm doing there, A. And B, even further, I want to be a cameraman. He was like, you want to be a cameraman? So you dropping out of college <clears throat> with no way to know, but you about to be a cameraman. That's foolish. You know what I'm saying? 
And I remember that conversation. I was at my mom's house in the basement. Me and my little brother were sharing a room because we had a family member move into his room. So, and I ended up coming back home from school. So, I'm sharing a room with my little brother, and he hit me on the phone and shit. And I just, man, I fucking started crying like shit, man. I was like, man, like, dad, you gotta hear me. Like, I ain't cry to him. I got off the phone, and then I cried in the room. And I was just in my in my brain and my body. I was just like, bro, you don't grasp what I really want to do and what I really think that I'm capable of. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that I'm capable. I think that I I think that I have it in me. You know what I'm saying? To to fucking become a cameraman in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Um. Or at least take care of myself with this camera shit. Like, get a little spot or something. You know what I'm saying? Get something to eat with the money from the camera shit. I know I can do that. Um, But my dad didn't feel me. And my dad's always supported everything that I wanted to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? Um, Especially, like, you know, because before that, only thing I did was, well, everything I wanted to do. He made sure I had a ride there. You know what I'm saying? You make sure I got there. My mom, too. You know what I'm saying? Both of my parents really, they always fucked with me on what I, like, what my endeavors were. So, like, they, they got me to all the band shows that was out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever they could do, man, they looked out for me. I, can, I don't have that struggle story like, oh, my parents ain't love me. You know what I'm saying? Um, That wasn't my case. My parents fucked with me like shit, and they still do. But... My dad told me I had to, like, nah, I couldn't drop out, basically. And I'm like, what? You're not even paying for this. Like, you got me fucked up. And how it went down was basically, um, I learned, I mean, you know, I hustled, I hustled, I hustled, and then I ended up landing a position at Nat Geo, you know. And, you know, in the meantime, I was catching cool gigs, and I'm like, Dad, look what I did, Dad. Trying to gain his approval. Look what I did, Dad. Trying to gain his approval. You know what I'm saying? But all the while, I'm realizing that even though I didn't have necessarily all the money that I needed for it, I was already doing something that he didn't do. I was doing something that he's never been a part of on so many different levels. And I was like, yo, he can't. He His advice uh, is great advice for his time. But I'm of a different world, so this information that he's giving to me, even though it's coming from a really, you know, well-intended place, he doesn't have, he doesn't live the similar life. He doesn't have a life even comparable to mine, and, and, and neither do I to his. And it's not a saying anybody's better or worse, it's just completely different. You feel what I'm saying? So his input's going to be guided in a certain way. He never understood, like, you know... Um, my dad was an entrepreneur, and he worked, and he did what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? He always was outside, but um, he don't know about being an artist and trying to like hustle up a gig, and you know what I'm saying? Sending an invoice to the client and having to wait 30 days before you get paid off the shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, his advice was obsolete, uh, and I let him get me down when he didn't understand. But then I really fucked his head up. Once I landed a victory that got me the same amount of money that he was making at his job. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I did this, you know, at 22. Um, I say all of this to say, if I would have listened to my father's input, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here with this web show with, you know, one, two, three, four lights used to shoot my web show you know what I'm saying? With super crispy sound, um, my own quality camera. You know, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this and sharing this information with you guys if I had to listen to what my dad had to say. Um, in that sense of like what I wanted to do with my life. You know, my dad has great advice about, man, if I was you, I wouldn't go down that street, listen to that type of shit. But when it comes to, when it comes to moving in a way and doing something for yourself that other people don't understand, you're going to have to be okay with that. I don't give a fuck if it's your father. I don't give a fuck if it's your friend. I don't give a fuck who it is. You feel what I'm saying? Like, when I think about doing stuff, 
I'm realizing now, you know what I'm saying, that everything that I'm able to do, um, I'm I'm doing it with other people. I'm a part of a I'm a part of a greater good, you know what I'm saying, or I'm a part of something. Every time I do anything, uh, even right now, like I'm doing this web show by myself, but I need you guys to interact with me and engage for me to even be encouraged to do it. A and to have a picture audience in my brain that I'm talking to and to, uh, you know, help this become successful. So I'm doing this with you guys, you know what I'm saying? But um, everything's a team collective effort. And some of the things that... What was my point in saying that? I lost my thought. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I usually smoke a J on the show, but if you can't tell, I'm fried. Because I just filmed another episode and I smoked some really good weed. This shit uh, is called, it was called Melty Ice Water Hash Infused El Blunto. This was a gelato blunt. Me and man, so that shit had me fried. So I'm going to wash this shit down with a cigarette. I usually don't even smoke cigarettes in my studio. But I love y'all and we talking about some good shit tonight. I don't want nobody telling me about how cigarettes are gross or I'm going to die or ooh, I don't give a fuck about none of that, young. Do I understand that these things are not healthy? Yes, I do. Um, but I might end up getting hit by a car or some wild shit like that. Knock on wood. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what God got lined up for me and I like these jumps, so I'm cooling. But anyway, um, so... My dad and like you know, basically we have a group we have a group uh we have a group think thing going on where, you know, we we listen to our village and what we see around us we have the tendency to imitate. You feel what I'm saying? And with our parents and our loved ones or people around us, um, they're gonna give you advice, but that advice from the bottom of their heart might be well intended, but it's only gonna come from a reality of what they understand. And it's up to you to be able to discern whether or not that information is, you know, valid to what you have going on or if you can move on to another juncture. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some parents that's trying to pressure their 30-year-old daughters to fucking, you know, have... to have babies. And um, it's like, you know, in their day... Women didn't have the same financial opportunities and they didn't have the same, you know, they weren't outside the same way. And, it, you know, it was a different time. So um, that mentality will be different and they're going to give you advice based on what their reality was. You feel me? Um, but now, you know, modern women have a completely different chance or completely different, you know, income, a uh, different type of leave and you know what I'm saying like it's just a whole different we live in a different world now so like I heard a quote from somewhere where it was like basically the world that our parents prepared us for doesn't exist anymore you know what I mean um they didn't have iPhones and shit like that and you know it was like it was their norm to find a job work that motherfucker for 30 years and retire from that job and you know man I don't give a fuck about staying in nobody company you know what I'm saying but I say all of that to say is that sometimes you're going to get advice from your parents that you cannot let you take, I mean, you cannot take it to heart, man. You can't listen to it either. If they're funding you, um, you have to get unfunded and just do your own thing. Um, because at the end of the day, man, you know, only the only person that's going to have to live with the decisions that you choose to make at the end of the day is you and what you don't want to do is listen to your parents to the to your to your demise because i mean they might put you on the right path or whatever but if you're not happy in what you're doing uh you're not doing anybody a service you know what i'm saying um i really don't want to i don't want to be the kind of parent that demands um that demands 
How can I word this? I'm not going to try to tell my daughter what to do. I'm going to try to help my daughter navigate through how to do what she chooses to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the parent that's like, Zuri, you better fucking go to, you better fucking go to Spelman and fucking get a degree and fucking become a doctor. Like, that's a cool plan and all, but that's not that might not might that might not necessarily be in line with what she wants. Um, and if it's not in line with what she wants, she might she really won't have the chance to prosper to her full potential in that undertaking because she's doing it under somebody else's goals. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to. I've been able to, I've made decisions. Your decisions are solely on you. And you only know, you and your bottom of your heart, you usually know what you're capable of. But it's the little birdies around you that'll tell you some otherwise shit. You feel me what I'm saying? Like, like sharing gems with motherfuckers. And, and, all right, prime example, man. I really don't want to, I want to tell a story, but I, I had so many names and shit, so I'm trying to figure out a politically correct way to express this. So I'm done thinking about it. Um, yo, people around you are going to tell you that shit that you want to do sounds crazy, but you really got to think about the first nigga that said, yo, I'm about to, I'm about to make a phone and I'm going to holler at niggas that's not here. The first person that said that shit was the wildest nigga ever. And it wasn't, it was only maybe one or two people around, I'm sure, that fucked with that idea because it wasn't in their, pe- it wasn't in their reality. Everybody else around him couldn't grasp something that far-fetched, you know what I'm saying? But he knew. And you got to think about it, man. If he would have let the people that didn't agree with him or think that that was possible uh, stop him from doing it, we wouldn't be able to, you know, watch this on your cell phone right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, and those are the things that that people that love you will stop you from doing unintentionally. And it's because they're doing it out of the name of love most of the time. Because, but, but their love is limited because they don't know what you know. So if they don't know what you know, you can't operate based on their fucking knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Um, another person I think about when I think about doing what I want to do. I think about the, the Wright brothers. Or not even the Wright brothers. Because those dudes were the ones that sensationalized it. Or pop, you know, made it made it mainstream, but I don't know who the first guy was, but the first guy to fucking go in the sky and fly, even if it was the Wright Brothers, which is what we were told, I still don't believe that for some reason, but you got to think about how wild people looked at the Wright Brothers when they was like, yeah, we about to make an airplane and fly like a bird. Niggas was like, bro, you're tripping. You're tripping. But they tried like shit. And they kept on trying and they kept on trying until they figured that shit the fuck out, young. And now we have fucking jets and fucking helicopters and 747s and fucking... What's the one? I don't even know the name of the jump that the, you know, Air Force One. We got all that shit now because somebody tried something that sounded wild to other people. And the people around them, you know what I'm saying... Um, project it. People project. Your mom and dad projects. Your neighborhood projects. You know what I'm saying? Your coworkers project because it's based on their reality, you know? But when you push the limits to what... When you push the limits and go and work through what you want, I promise you it's going to be successful on the other side. You cannot listen to another motherfucker but so much because it's your life. You know what I'm saying? Um, Everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their weaknesses. And, you know, people's advice is only going to be based off of what I just explained, their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, people who naysay to the Wright brothers about 
the airplane um, didn't have the the the, the the imagination that the Wright brothers had. So what they were saying just sounded like a fucking fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you got and then you got to really think about the detriment that listening to those naysayers could have caused society. <clears throat> and I know that shit sounds like I'm trying to be deep and shit, but nah. If the if I right, the Wright brothers, this is how I have it in my imagination. The Wright brothers had a girlfriend, and his girlfriend was like, man, I need you home, boo. I don't want you to keep trying to jump out the plane. You're going to die. And this nigga said, baby, I was born to fly. I got to do this shit, man. And she was like, man, fuck you, Mr. Wright brother. I, I, I'm i gone. I know that if that was to be the case, this nigga had to, had to look her in her face and say, I love you like shit, but bye. Bye. Because if he was to listen to her, we wouldn't have Spirit Airlines. <laughs> if he'd have listened to her, if he'd have listened to his naysayers, we wouldn't have the we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to travel the world with the comfort and the ease that we do today. Our whole reality would be completely different if that nigga would have listened to the naysayers. Same thing with the cell phone. You gotta be off your. You gotta think about the niggas around this nigga. That was <laughs> when this dude was like, you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to make a. I'm about to make a. Uh, I'm about to talk to my man. That's not even his son. They looked at your man and said, "You're bugging." Um, and to to the people who like to use oh I'm grown I do what I want to do woo, woo, woo. I do what I want to do I'm grown I'm, I don't give a fuck if that's your rhetoric and that's your temperament nobody's input should make you hesitate on what you're trying to get done nobody's not a podcast not your mother not your father not your mans nobody because if you have that attitude um, you're not binded to the things that's in you, that's around you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember being, I was in a trap, young, around the way, and I was a, I was around a bunch of you know, real niggas that be outside, and um, I was you know, one of them was a rapper and shit, and this is before I had any cool things pop off yet, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was around their way, I was around I was around the way or whatever, and I was just talking to them, and I was like, yeah, man, this is my video work, this is what I do, and you know, I've always been a nigga that like to, to drop knowledge or try to share with niggas shit that I know, and I don't give a fuck where I'm at. If I'm around the way with my men and them, like, I'm gonna talk the same way that I'm talking now, you know what I'm saying? Um, I grew up in I grew up in, in DC and it's a lot of real niggas out there. You know what I'm saying? A lot, and you gotta know how to move to survive. But that's a whole other conversation. But um, I was around there and I was talking about oh, I'm gonna be a cameraman. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna woo 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 woo. And I had a couple little cool gigs that gave me the moxie to believe in what I was saying to these dudes. You know what I'm saying? And one of them was like, man, Malcolm, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, man. We got crack, nigga. And pulled out a bag of crack. We're like, you need to sell this shit, nigga. This where you going to get money at. Fuck you talking about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And, you know, it was partial jokes and everybody was laughing and shit. It was partial jokes, but um, these niggas was dead ass serious in the same, in the same sense. They didn't have, they didn't have faith. That the nigga that lived on the same block as them, you know, up the street from them, could fucking do the things that I was pro projecting or wanting to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, because their realities were limited, and the people around them only believed that, and the things that they shown only believed that. But I couldn't, I wouldn't be living the life that I'm living. I wouldn't have the experiences that I have, or the friends that I've made, or any of that if I would have listened to those dudes. I'd probably either be in jail or shot up or shot somebody listening to that kind of advice and i bring that up to say it's like when i was in there 
I was like, yo, you're a grown ass man, right? And one of the niggas was like, yeah, I'm a grown ass man. And I'm like, who make you do stuff? He was like, nobody make me do shit, nigga. I do what the fuck I want. Woo, 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 woo. I said, so why do you, why don't you fucking like do what you really want to do? And he was like, what you mean? I was like, you know what you really want to do. And I don't know what it is. I'm not going to ask you what it is. I'm not going to press you down on it. But you know what you really want to do, bruh. And you're not doing it. You're in the trenches right here doing this shit. And you got to look over your shoulders. You got to carry the joint on you at all times. You're fucking shooketh. But if you're really a real nigga like you say you are, and nobody's making you do shit, why don't you go do something amazing? If nobody make you do it, make you do nothing, tight nigga. It fucked their heads up. And my man looked at me like I was a fucking asshole. And you know what I'm saying? Dismissed my thought. But on my way home, that shit brought tears to my eyes. I cried because I realized that people um, limit themselves, man, based on what other people around them project. And that's all it is is a projection. You know what I'm saying? Um, It's a lot more I want to say about this, but I'm having brain farts. And I didn't take any notes. But, um... Yo. The moral of what I'm trying to get across is that when you have a feeling about yourself and your gut... It shouldn't matter what nobody else has to say about it, bro. Go for that. Fuck with that. Shot with that. Lead with that. Because when you do, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, has a really strange way of fucking with you because you're fucking with yourself. And um, I'm in the middle right now of life where I'm really trying to learn what that even means and looks like to me. Like, um, I came to LA with a certain list of goals and expectations of what I wanted to do in my career. And here I am at 29 and I feel like I'm not walking in the right way. Or I feel like the goals that I wanted to do, I accomplished really quickly. And like now I'm toppling out and, um, it's a struggle. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I listen to the, and I let the industry words penetrate my brain and I think about what other cameramen tell me I need to do to to prosper in this field and I've seen their outcomes and I'm not fucking with their outcomes I don't want to be on that shit you know what I'm saying so I can't listen their advice is only going to get me as far as they are so I'm in a I'm in a conundrum right now where I'm trying to take my own advice and I'm giving to y'all and really walking in my full greatness and my full true potential for me, not listening to nobody else's outside opinions, and not and not and not holding myself to a standard that somebody else set. You know what I'm saying? I realize that I'm a perfectionist because I'm holding myself to a standard that somebody else set. So I'm like, it gotta look like this, and I have to use that. And if I don't do it this way, it's like, nah, man, shut the fuck up. Go and do it. Because I'm over here trying my best to live up to somebody else's standard that I'm petrified into stiffness and now I'm not doing anything. You know? Um, That shit runs deep. But you really can't listen to the outside world. Because if... When you... God gave you a conscious... That little voice in the back of your head that you hear at night, young. You got that shit for a reason. And I feel like the reason is... It's because once you listen to that voice... You're able, you're able to provide something to the world that, that's useful. Um, and I feel like it's our responsibility and our duty um, to the world to not listen to the motherfuckers that are trying to limit you to their reality. <clears throat> um, it'll fuck you up. And if you listen to somebody... Um, and you walk in, and you walk in something that you really don't want to walk in, and you do something, or you become a part of something that you really don't want to be a part of. Um, if you do that, uh, you'll be unhappy, and you'll be selling yourself short. You'll burn out. You'll burn out quickly too. 
and it might be like a spiritual burnout. It might be a physical burnout. It might be an emotional burnout. But you will burn out listening to another motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Um, and sometimes, and another thing is, you can't take... When people tell you advice that isn't conducive with what you're trying to get done for yourself, you can't take it personal, man. They don't fucking know. You know? They really don't know. Like, um, because I mean, unless it's rooted in hate, you got to change your company. But most of the time, the people that you love the most would be the ones that will tell you what you can and can't do or what you should and shouldn't do. Um, it really will be the ones that's, that's closest to you because strangers going to be the first ones to shop with you and believe in you. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't know you. But, um. It takes a certain level of courage to not give a fuck about what your mom and dad are talking about. Uh, not to the disrespectful point, because, like, they're your mom and dad. They raised you. They gave you gems, and they got you fucking... They clothed you, and they fed you, and they smart in their own regard. You know what I'm saying? But you are going to have to live your life. You know what I'm saying? And... Sometimes them outside voices and them outside entities ain't going to get you what you're trying to get, you know? I um, have another example of, you know, I quit my job making like 50000 a year. I had a one-year-old daughter. I had like $3,000 in my pocket. And I hated my job, and I was doing a poor job at it because I hated it. And... I wasn't doing nobody a service by sticking around in that position. So I I figured out I'm going to quit, and I quit the job. After I quit, my, um, you know, I, I, I was fucked up the day that I quit. Like, my I put a two weeks notice in. My very last day young, I was fucked up. Like, I was fucked up my last day. Um. Yeah, man, it was highly emotional. I felt like, I felt a lot, you know? And um, I was scared because I didn't know what was on the other side of what I wanted to do, but I knew what I was doing is what I, wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And um, I quit and I left. And it was like I said, it was an emotional goodbye, man. I felt, a lot of, I felt a lot of things. The next morning, the very next morning, Pepsi called me. Pepsi called me and was like, hey, we need you to shoot some internal videos. Ooh, you got to shoot with some of the local DJs. So I work with people from 93.9 and 95.5 in the city. And I recorded internal videos for Pepsi 93, which is like something that they were trying to make with like liquor or whatever. I don't know. Like a rum and coke, but you do it with the Pepsi 93 or whatever it was called. Anyway. Pepsi called me the very next day, and I'm like, how did y'all get my number? And the rabbit hole of how they got my number was just like, it didn't make any sense. It was like, a lady that I met, and I worked with a lady that she met, and then they called her up, and then she was like, oh, I remember Malcolm from that one time. Boom. And if I was working at my old job, I wouldn't have been able to take that gig because it was happening during the work day. You know what I'm saying? Uh during a work week and that sustained me and then after that I got another job and that job gave me a ten thousand dollar raise from the fifty thousand that I was making I went to sixty thousand and I didn't go a day without but if I'd have listened to the people around me my old boss saying don't quit or my mom and dad telling me don't go or you know uh, my daughter's mom, she didn't question it for one second. She said, if you got to go, you got to go. And I was like, thanks, man. Um, I really appreciated that. My man, Jared, he, he had some kind words, and he really encouraged me to do it. But, you know, when I jumped out and I left, I looked wild to other people. I looked like a fucking nut. I looked like an idiot. A new baby quitting a job making 50000 You're only 23. I was 24. You're only 24. You know what I'm saying? You tripping. Ooh, you tripping. I was 23. Damn, yeah, I was 23, young. Huh? No, 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 no. I was 24. However old I was, I had a young baby. I was young. 
I am young. And people was like, bro, you cannot quit your job. I quit that fucking job. I ended up making $10,000 more, working with Pepsi, making $4,000 that month. So I made more quitting in the first month being out than I would have been at my old job. Then I got a job making $10,000 more. That happened in March, November, I mean March, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Eight months later, I got another ten thousand dollar raise at that same job so i went from making fifty thousand dollars in february to making seventy thousand dollars in november and i didn't listen to nobody i listened to myself you know um and i'm not telling people not to listen to nobody people have gems for you and you got to listen to them but if it's not conducive with what you got going on in your spirit you cannot listen to them what pootie tank say you got to give them the name my brother you got to give them the name now. Because when I got that $70,000, I called my pops up and I was like, Dad, you know, um, I just got the job. They offered me $70,000. Woo, woo. And he was like, man, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, hey, <laughs> on man time, you remember, you know, X amount of years ago when we was on the phone and you told me that I shouldn't be doing this camera shit and I need to be doing this shit. This was the moment that I knew that I could get. Not even the 50000 This 20000 more a couple months later is what I knew that I could do if I believed in myself and I didn't give a fuck about what you was talking about. Because you're not in this. You don't do what I be doing. You don't know nothing about this. So how the fuck can I listen to you? You know? Um, I quit that job. And now I live in Los Angeles and I do not make that money no more. Uh, I'm making money, but not... Actually, I ain't even gonna hold y'all, bruh. This shit been real out here, bruh, for me. When I first hit, when I first got out here, I hit the ground running. And like I said, when the last time I, I hit the ground running, I ended up making 4000 And then I ended up making a $10,000 raise and I'm making another $10,000. That ain't how it happened this time. Now I'm outside for real, my man. I'm outside for real, young. And I'm okay with that. And I'm growing okay with that because I'm realizing that that means that I know I look crazy to motherfuckers, but I got to do what I got to do for me. I know what I'm capable of and I know what I got up my sleeve and I know what I want to offer to the world, including this channel. I got some things that I'm not going to say out loud at all right now. I just want to walk in it. I don't even got to talk about it. I'm going to just do it. But... Listening to another motherfucker that don't know what you got going on, that's not in your spirit, that's not in your soul, will have you fucked up. It will really have you fucked up, man. Um, when you're when you're a child, you can't necessarily not listen to your mom and dad because they'll make you do it. You know what I'm saying? But the second you're grown, um. It's not going to be easy, but you're going to have to take the moxie not to listen to some of these motherfuckers. And I don't mean not listen to your detriment. I cannot stress that enough. I'm not talking about your mom and dad being like, don't do crack. And you being like, fuck that mom and dad. I'm going to hit this pipe. No. That's great advice. But you being like, hey, mom and dad, I want to be a fucking journalist. And your mom and dad being like, oh, I want you to be a fucking doctor or your homies around the way saying I want you to be a trap artist you know what I'm saying you gotta have it in you to say fuck y'all no and then and you might lose some friends over it you might lose some sleep over it you know you might feel isolation you will feel isolation because of it because You're not with them in that regard anymore. And they're going to look at you funny because you're not of them. And they're going to question your decision-making skills. They're going to be like, yo, are you are you not listening because you don't fuck with me? Are you not listening because, you know what I'm saying, you don't give a fuck? Are you not listening because you're a tough guy? Are you not listening because you think you're special? Nah, none of that. You got to say that I'm not listening because I'm trying to feed my spirit, man. That's it. I'm trying to do something for me that... I haven't been able to, that I don't know how to do otherwise. And your advice uh, isn't going to help me get done what I'm trying to get done for me in my life. 
And uh and to the people that's worried about hurting somebody else's feelings about that, fuck they feelings, young. Fuck how they feel, bro. If somebody got a problem with you doing you and they don't and they don't fuck with your so what? So what? That includes your mother and father, young. As long as you're not hurting nobody and you're not doing nothing like, you know what I'm saying, foul, if you're just walking in your whole in your whole self and somebody got a fucking objection to it, I promise you the problem isn't you. It's them. Fuck them. Find your tribe. You know what I'm saying? Um. And once you're in your tribe and once you're in your jam and once you... Once you prove a little bit of shit to motherfuckers, you won't have to deal with that so much. You won't hear you won't hear so much ill advice, cause a lot of motherfuckers are just starting to believe you. Um, it's like that Drake song when he had to like, I don't know why people keep you know when he had to, he had the fucking sample when he was like, I don't know why people keep telling something. They need to just shut the fuck up and enjoy the show. That's how I feel. It's like, bro, I've jumped off the ledge a couple times. And I've pulled parachutes out. I've had the squirrel suit. I've pulled moves that you didn't know that I could move. But I didn't even know I could move them. But I felt that I could. I didn't have no certainty in it. But I knew that if I tried, if I knew if I put some faith in myself, I might have probably could do it. And if I don't, then I'll go back and listen to you. Fuck it. This shit ain't work. Cool. You know what I'm saying? You got it. This shit ain't work. I'm going to go listen to this nigga now. And you always got that option. If it doesn't work out, you know, and if the person that gave you the advice truly fuck with you and it didn't work out the way you wanted to work out, they'll still be there to give you that advice and help you. But in the meantime, you got to do something for yourself. When I used to go shoot dice at the MGM, it used to be always this old motherfucker in the corner shooting the dice at my son. Do it for yourself. Do it for your motherfucking self. Do it for yourself. Do it for your motherfucking self. And sometimes he'll win and sometimes he lose, but at least he did it for his motherfucking self. That's my episode this week, y'all. I was rapping like shit. This is a, a subject that I really wanted to expound a little bit more upon, but um, I'm high and I'm a little sleepy. Whew, that was some really good fucking weed, young. If you see a jar that look like this, I'm sorry, I ain't gonna put it up to the camera because it's gonna get blurry, but if you just see something that looks similar, bro, just try this shit. It's called El Blunto. <laughs> you see El Blunto? You better El Capo. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, man. Fuck what they talking about, bro. Do you, man. Worst case scenario, it don't work out, and then you can listen to them motherfuckers. But do you. Because you only got one life, man. And if you don't live it up, you're going to die of regret. Regretting shit. Or oh, having the old oh, head, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Fuck that. I'm not having no shoulda, coulda, woulda shit. Fuck you. But, um, alright, y'all. I wrapped y'all up enough. Thank you for watching this week's episode of the Malcolm Cook Show. I'm your host, Malcolm Cook. Send this jump to a motherfucker that you like. Subscribe, comment, share it. Glare it, blare it, all that, peace. <laughs>